we're going to talk about this afternoon, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into our, our topic today, uh, dealing with communication in the family, in the family circle, how we talk to each other, um, and uh, everyday things that, that translates into how we talk when we get into the church setting and outside of our, our, home, uh, our home. And then we're going to do a little exercise together, we're going to have some interaction here. And um, so we can, because from this we can learn from each other just by the words that we that we say. Since our conversion, uh, we gave our hearts to Jesus. We don't cuss anymore, do we? <laughs> at least so nobody can hear it. At least so that. <laughs> but we say some interesting things to each other that can that can be just as damaging uh, with that. And so we want to talk about that uh, today. Let's bow our heads and ask, ask the Lord to bless us as we, as we uh, discuss today. Father, thank you so much for the Sabbath and for the fellowship that we've enjoyed here in Mount Pleasant. Surely it has been ple pleasurable for us, and we want to thank you for that. Be with us now, Lord, as we talk about some practical things in terms of how you want us to live and, and how you want us to relate one to the other by the way that we communicate. We thank you so much for all that you do and for the blessings that will be ours in this session. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Now, we're going to pass out some handouts, and everything that, we, that, that you're getting is what you will see on the screen. And it just kind of helps you to go, help us to, uh, to operate uh, together. I think we've got more than enough for everybody. We have 30. Uh -huh. I think we got more than enough for everybody. Got enough? They didn't get it on, on, on this table. Oh, there they come. Okay. Okay. Let me have one, huh? Okay. Thank you. Everybody get one? We're going to start with a spiritual ground rule, and uh, I need a volunteer to read to read that that spiritual guard, uh, ground rule as we as we begin. Now, here's the thing: I used to tell my students, "Do not open the package. <laughs> because the first one, everybody's going. <laughs> We're on this page. <laughs> Back in the classroom. Back in the classroom. I need a volunteer to read the, the spiritual ground rule and we'll follow. Yes. Okay. God is constantly communicating. He created by speaking. Throughout Bible history, he has constantly communicated to and through men and women in his loving word, Jesus, and in his written word. We were originally made in God's image like him possessing the ability to communicate. When mankind chose to sin, their role as children of God, oh, you wait a minute, I skipped the line. When, when mankind chose to sin, their communication skills came under the domi domination of God's enemy. Our role as children of God is to restore our ability to communicate God's love, his character, his plan of restoration. Thank you so much. Everything came under the domination of sin. And um, so even the way that we began to communicate. When you reread re Genesis 3, I want you to begin to read it with some, some imagination. Because of the fact that when, 
Adam and Eve uh, partook of the fruit from the tree, their whole relationship with each other changed. Surely their language had to be changed, especially when, when God expelled them from the Garden of Eden. You think they were holding hands saying, it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. No, 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 no. We just got kicked out of our home. I imagine that there had to be some fussing going on. You see what you did? Yeah. If you hadn't gone to the tree, then we wouldn't have, well, you didn't have to eat it just because I gave it to you. But I am just imagining but some of the conversation that must have been going on between the two of them because things changed in terms of their, in terms of their relationship and even when we, when we come in to the church and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God's got to clean us up a whole bunch. Somebody say amen. 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 From, you know, and, and Adventism is, a, is, is just wonderful because like I, uh, I like to tell people, when you come into, when you converted into Adventism, you find out that God gets into all of your business. He gets, he gets into your pocketbook. He gets into your pantry, you know. He gets into the way you relate, who you, re who you associate with. And he even gets in, what we're discovering now, he even gets into your language. He changes your mode of talk, you know. He said you've got to put away the foul language, but not just put away the foul language. You've got to learn how to talk nice to each other. And as we established last night, good religion starts in the home. It's how we talk to each other in our home setting determines how we're going to talk once we get outside of that, outside of the home arena. Turn to your next page. Do you want me to change the slide? Because you're not done. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. Okay. Okay. The next one. Here's the principle that we're going to deal with today, and I want everybody to read this with me. The principle is understanding before action. Say that. Understanding before action. Action before understanding can lead to disaster. Action before understanding can lead to disaster. Now what that means is, is that communication is not, so, uh, is not all about what you say, but it's also about how the other person perceives what you, what you say. So if someone, if someone in your family is talking, then you want to be listening with the purpose of trying to understand what they are saying. Understanding doesn't mean that you agree with what they're saying. It just means that you see where they're coming from, okay? And, and we live in an age now where everybody wants to talk at the same time, thinking that if I get louder than you, then I'll be able to make my point. And so if everybody's talking together, nobody's doing what? Listening. Nobody's listening. And that's the hardest part of, of communication. Proverbs 18.2 says... A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. And that's what we see today. You see it on talk shows, on the, on the TV. You see it when, you, when two people are, are talking. They're, they're, one wants to get their, their, their point across so, so badly that you're interrupting each other. You're not, nobody's listening. And, and, and then it ends up in a big argument and a great misunderstanding. And, uh, and the devil's goal has been achieved. His goal is to disrupt the home any way that he can do it. Okay? Any way that he can do it. If he can keep us from being able to talk uh, nicely to each other. And it's interesting how, how we, we will talk to our family members one way and talk to other people another way. You could be in a heated conversation with, your, with a family member, doorbell rings, and, uh, and you're, you're still talking back to the person in the, in the family, as soon as you open the door, I say, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> no, you know, and, 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 uh, and the same thing happens in, in our relationship and how, how we come to church. The Sabbath morning, I, I mentioned this morning that sometimes Sabbath morning is the worst time for a family because the devil always does something on Sabbath morning, tries to do something to disturb your peace even before you get to church. And so you're, you're fussing all the way. You may be fussing all the way to church. And as soon as you get out of the car and you see another church member, you say, happy Sabbath. Yeah. You're doing okay? And, you're, and the family member is looking at it, who is that? Because that's not the same person that was in the car with me on the way, on the way here. You see? And then your whole, your whole Sabbath service is, is disturbed simply by the way that we communicate 
uh, with, uh, with, with each other. So we want to talk, talk about that. Um, your next slide under there is the, what we call the speaker listener technique. And it's a simple technique. It simply means when one person is talking, the other person is doing what? <coughs> listening. It's listening, okay? But it's the way that you listen, and it's, the way, and it's actually the way that you, that you talk. And there are rules in communication just like there are rules in anything else, okay? There are rules for the speaker. If you have the floor and you're talking, speak for yourself. Don't try to mind read or share your, share your thoughts, your feelings, your wants, and your, and your actions. Now, Carmen and I, we get real transparent when we do this because when we first got married, um, Carmen was one of those individuals who would always try to finish my sentences for me. You know anybody like that? No? I'd start to say something and she'd say, and I said, I don't know what, I'm going, I don't know what I was going to say. You know? You know, and then I said, that even if it got close, I wasn't going to tell you. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you hate for somebody to try, to, try, try to, to read what you're saying because you cannot mind read. Because one of the gifts that God did not give any of us was the ability to read somebody else's mind. So he, yeah. he, he remedied that by giving us a mouth to speak and two ears to listen. So he's literally saying by just by mere creation, listen twice as much as you speak. James 1.19, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. That's, that, that, that's God's admonition in terms of how we, how we communicate with each other. Share your thoughts. Talk in small chunks. Now I'm going to pick on you a little bit, ladies, in this room, because of the fact that Women sometimes have a hard time talking in small chunks. <laughs> Women have the ability to be able to talk about five different things at one time on one subject. Mm -hmm. They can talk about five different things at one time, can't you? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, now, you know, as Zacchaeus and Anna, mm -hmm. you know, they have this beautiful spread. You know, lots of land. Not like where I grew up. You know, in Brooklyn, you know, up there in New York. I think New York is near New Jersey. You know, up there in the north of England, it snows so badly there. They've had all that snow, and now they're worried about the water, you know, flowing into Lake Erie and Lake Michigan, and up there near Chicago. It's cold up there too, honey, and the wind, the wind in Chicago. This is why men look like this. <laughs> because, see, we, the conversation started about Pastor and Mrs. Perea. Now we're already in Chicago. You know, and we're talking about the weather there. Now, eventually, she'll get back to the Pereas, you know. But men are saying, you know, where, 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 where are we at with this? You know? And, uh, and before, before I realized that I was doing that, he would say to me, excuse me. What are we talking about? And I would go, were you not listening? <laughs> Listen. So now, you know, after, after years of marriage now, I just say, I said, now please, just give me the Reader's Digest version. Okay? Now don't tell me, because you know, one of the worst questions that a man can ask his wife uh, is, how did your day go? You might as well pack a lunch, gentlemen, because it's going to be a it's going to be a scenic tour on what on what we did, every conversation that, that went on, and it's the way we, we communicate. And you can be talking five or ten minutes, and you lost your you lost your hearer of that conversation way back in minute two. You see, so you got to talk in small chunks, and you also have to understand that there's a difference between the way that men communicate and the way women communicate. <coughs> Women can talk on different topics at the same time, but also cite me some differences that you know. The difference between a man, the way a man communicates and the way a woman communicates. What's some of the differences that you've noted? We elaborate a lot of detail. A yeah. lot of detail. Women are more detail oriented than men. That's why the scenic tour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why the scenic tour. You tell them it's that how did, what did you do in church today? You know, so she's going to tell you everything that, and all the conversation that she had with somebody <laughs> and all of this, you know. Uh, Carmen's a school teacher, and, and I used to just sit patiently. <laughs> and I said, now I've got to listen to everything 
that she was in school eight hours. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have, I, I asked that question, I thought it would be done in about two minutes, okay? So, so women are more detailed than, than men. What else? More what feelings. else? More feelings. More feelings. feelings. More feelings. So you're going to talk, you're going to talk uh, with feeling words. Uh-huh. I feel this, you know, and I thought that she should have done this. Or this. But, so, yeah, feelings. What else? What else uh, other differences do you, do you know about the difference between men and women communicating? Well, you don't want to say anything to hurt their feelings. Yeah. Get you crying or... <laughs> it goes back to feelings, doesn't it? I know everybody's crying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the way that they interpret what is being said is different. Oh. You can say something that does not mean yes. something, and then they, they take it a totally different way. Oh, yes. The eyes, you know, what you didn't expect. That, okay. that, that okay. question mark did that. Oh, the, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How a woman can make a statement, but she asked it, makes a statement in the, and puts it in the form of a question. Hmm? Yes, you know, like, we're driving along, and I see this building that I don't remember seeing. So I said, I wonder how long that building's been there. When, was that, when that building was created? He says, how would I know that? <laughs> I wasn't here when they built the thing. I, I don't know how old that building is. An immediate difference between the way men communicate and women communicate. Men and I said, men. and I said, uh -huh. Okay, I didn't want all that information. <laughs> but she asked a question, and men by nature are problem solvers. Uh -huh. problem solvers. So if you, if you ask a man a question, then he's going to come in, he's going to give you an answer. So what we have to understand, gentlemen, is that there is a difference between men, way men and women communicate, and we have to understand that when a woman asks a question, she's really not always asking a question, she's making a statement. True or not? Yes. Okay. Then I question the man's question is then, then why did you put a question mark behind that statement? Because if you ask the question, we're going to come up with a solution. Say amen, gentlemen. Amen. Because we are problem solvers. That's what we do. The deal is that it wasn't a problem for her. She was just speaking out loud. She Thank was you. speaking out loud. That's all she was doing. She was, her thoughts were there and she was speaking with then why did she direct it toward him? She did it. <laughs> but she asked a question, didn't she? Yeah. 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 And we're yeah, smart. We're going to give you an answer. <laughs> See? Because before GPS, that's why we never stopped to ask for direction. Because we know how to figure stuff out. Amen, gentlemen. Amen. Yeah. We might go 50 miles out the way, but we will figure it out. But <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, a woman could be just making a statement because she wants somebody to listen to her, but the man won't just listen. He's starts trying to solve a problem that's not even there. She's just sharing something. There you go. There you go. Are you getting an education, gentlemen? Are you getting an education? Well, I get an education every time I do this. <laughs> yes, sir. An interesting video that illustrates that point is this video talking about a woman with a nail in her head, and it actually shows a nail in her head, and she's talking about the nail in the head, and the guy's just sitting there chomping at the bit to fix the problem. Oh. But that's not what she wants. She wants him to just listen. Right. <laughs> it's a pretty humorous video. <laughs> women are also more family oriented than men. When women get together, what do they normally talk about? Family. Their kids. Family, talk Their kids. about kids, talk about husband, talk about, huh? Shopping. Cleaning, who cleaned the house, how much he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When men get together, what do men usually talk about? Sports. Sports. <laughs> <laughs> she said that? She said killing something. <laughs> if, if, if men get together that have not, that, that, have, that have just met, haven't, they haven't known each other, within five minutes, one of the questions that's going to be asked when men talk is, what do you do for a living? That's right. Mm -hmm. First two well, minutes. That's right. That's right. And what ask. kind of car do you drive? That's exactly That's right. right. Yeah. And, and women will say, one lady might say, what is your name, sweetheart? Jean. Jean. Jean might say to Elaine. Elaine. Elaine, uh, I'm going to the restroom. Come go with me. You don't see men doing that. <laughs> 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 
Because men know that there's some things you do by yourself. Come on, say man, huh? Yeah. And, see, when, and when you go to the restroom, uh, if, if, ladies, if you were ever to go to a men's restroom, there's no talking going on in there. We do what we need to do coming on out. You know, there are no pictures on the walls. There are none, none, none of those couches in the lounge or nothing like that, you know. Huh? It's so bad. I walked into a men's bathroom by mistake. And I walked in there, and there's four men at the urinal. <laughs> Nobody's saying a thing. And I looked around, there were no pictures on the walls, there were no mirrors, no lotion on the counter. I just went, ooh. Well, they were paying attention to what they were doing. There you go, there you go. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but he doesn't understand. I, like, just, just yesterday, we stopped at Cracker Barrel to eat yesterday afternoon, and this woman was there trying out a blouse that she bought from Cracker Barrel. And I said, oh, it's such a pretty color. She said, you think so? I said, it's just kind of sheer. I said, well, you know, you could wear this, or you could wear that, you know. And then I took the lotion, I said, oh, am I going to smell that lotion? And she said, oh. Yeah. All of that, the pictures and stuff on the wall, now that's a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Men understand that the bathroom has one use. <laughs> you go in there and take care of it and then leave. Huh? Any conversation, I'll talk to you when we get outside. Right? So that, as, as a basic difference, the way they, that men and women communicate. And it's interesting. Women are more, women are, are more detailed where men are more concrete. Women ask the question, usually put a, a question mark on a statement um, to keep the conversation going. Men can't understand why you want to keep the conversation going once I've given you an answer. See? Mm -hmm. I've given you a concrete answer and let's let's move on to something move on else. to something else. Yeah. Okay? So talking small chunks and understanding the difference. And now, let me just say this. Just because we communicate differently gender wise doesn't mean that there's a right or a wrong. It just means different. And we have to come to understand those differences and appreciate uh, appreciate those differences and, and that's where the, the trial and error comes and, you know, and being able to be patient with each other when we are communicating with each other. Stop and let the listener, for the speaker, stop and let the listener paraphrase. Your goal is to help the listener hear and understand your point of view. Remember, understanding before action. The only time that a person who, is, who, who has the floor and is speaking should be interrupted is just by the other person saying, are you saying this? Let me be clear. What are you, that, that you're saying this? Because sometimes you can say something, and you, to you, it can be absolutely clear. But remembering that part of communication is also how the other person perceives what you have been saying. So it's not always clear. So to interrupt, to be able to say, are you saying this? And the speaker might say, no, that's not what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. And you may have to have that exchange back and forth because you really want to understand where they, where they are coming from. Understanding before action. That's the principle that you want to look at. Now, there are some, there are some rules also for the listener. The listener can paraphrase what they hear. If you truly don't understand some phrase or example, you may ask the speaker to clarify or repeat. You may not ask questions on any other aspect of the issue unless you have the floor. Secondly, don't rebut. Focus on the speaker's message. You can't even make faces. You know how sometimes we listen to a person talking, you're doing this. You ain't, you've not said a word, but your body language is screaming at them. And it immediately lets them know you're not listening because you're concentrating on what your response to them is going to be. What are some of the signs that a person will know that they have your undivided attention? Eye contact. Eye contact is one, okay? And we're going to come back to that one. Okay, what else? If you're facing them, well, you have to do that. That's right. Okay. Your body language, because you can look, but your body could be turned away. That's so correct. You're saying, even position. though I'm listening, I'd rather that's be somewhere correct. else. Okay, okay. posture and position, that's, that's good. Yes, posturing and position. Yeah, what else? Okay, 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 position of the eyes, okay, okay, what else? That you're not also like on the phone, on the computer. Good, okay, not doing something else while, they, while, while they're doing it. Sometimes leaning forward, 
you know, give them an idea that you're talking, you know, and and occasionally nodding the head that they that you that, that, that they're on the same page, of understanding um, uh, for uh, for that. Um, let's get back to the eye contact because you have to be very careful even from the eye contact in terms of culture, because in the Hispanic culture, it is impolite, say for a child to look the adult in the eye when they're speaking to them. It's disrespectful, it's a sign of disrespect. You know, and, and a, if a person has grown up that way, then it becomes difficult for them to be able to look someone in the eye with that. So how do you know that when you have spoken to a member in your family, that they have gotten what you have said? They repeat it back. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. They ought to be able to repeat back to you what they have said, and remembering, Understanding does not mean that you are in agreement. It just means that you see what, where they're coming from. Now, this becomes very important when you're trying to resolve some kind of conflict be, uh, within, within, the, uh, within, the, within the home because you want to get on the same page of understanding. When people come to us for, for counseling, and usually the, 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 the area of difficulty is always centers around, most of the time, the majority of the time, around communication doesn't listen to me when I talk to him. She doesn't listen to me when I talk to her, you know. And um, th those are the, the, the signs we're getting. And, and so we say to them, said, now, right now, our goal is, will be to try to get you on the same page of understanding. Because right now, not only are you not on the same page of understanding, you're not even in the same book, OK? So, so we got to get you in the same book, then on the same page of, 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 of understanding. And a lot of that goes. From, from listening. What are some of the roadblocks to you becoming an effective listener when, 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 when you're talking to, and then we're going to keep it in the family circle, to a family member? Yes, ma'am. Give me your name, please. Lynn. Lynn. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you're not an effective listener when you think you already know what they're going to say. Oh, that's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We've been together 30 or 40 years, and you're you're doing a bit of mind reading, but... Um, yeah, you're doing a whole lot of mind reading. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Lynn, you're right. And it doesn't matter how long you've been together, you still don't have that ability. You can tell by expression on somebody's face that may be something wrong, but you really don't know what's going on in their head. And uh, I've seen arguments in, between family members uh, with that. He says, I know what you're thinking. Well, no, you don't. Not unless you sign your name G-O-D. That's... You sign, so you start signing your name G-O-D, then, then I, I might be convinced. But since, uh, since I know that that's not going to happen, then you don't know what's going on in my head. Um, because things change. We had a couple that came to us, and um, his problem was that she was a motor mouth. So that the, she went past five minutes and, and talked so fast that he felt like he was doing this, trying to, okay, well, she's going to breathe, and I'm going to get in there some kind of way. <laughs> and so what we said to them was, take a piece of child, whoever's holding it, that's the person that has the floor, that's the speaker. Get one of those uh, egg timers and set it for five minutes. When that thing rings, you've got to stop. I don't care if you're mid-sentence, finish that sentence, and then let the person paraphrase to see if they understand what you're saying. Because this speaker listener technique, it sounds real easy, but not always. And you have to tell you, ask yourself, man, am I one of those that it's a motor mouth, I just keep talking? You, those kind of things you're gonna have to look at and be honest with yourself. Yes. Yeah. So let me put it to the, let me put it to you all. How do you effectively communicate with a family member that just has the runs at the mouth? I mean, they just, you, and, and, and they, they can almost talk without, seemingly like without a breath, and you're trying to get in. What suggestions can we, can we offer to, how do you get in on them? Yes, Anna. Uh, <laughs> she said, Anna says, raise your hand. You know, like, yeah, now my wife does that. She does, she does that. That's a good one, Anna, because she does that. When, when, when Carmen first came into our family, um, my family is, um, when we get excited, <laughs> We get loud. We get, we get loud. And the, the conversation gets loud. <clears throat> and we're talking at a rapid pace. 
and, and everything. And I remember the first time we, uh, she, she was exposed to that, and she looked at me and she said, are they mad at each other? <laughs> said, no, no, they just, they just like being around here. Everybody just likes being around. We talk loud, you know. And so that's what she does. Kyle, we, we all be talking, and Carmen just raised her hand. And everybody said, uh-oh, Carmen's got a statement to make or a question to make. She's got her hand up. So, yeah, talk, uh, raising your hand is a good one. What's another way? What's another way you get in on a conversation? Slow down. <laughs> yeah, ask oh, you asked him to slow down. down. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, ask him to slow down. Okay. Any, any other suggestions? This is why we help each other with this because we know that there's a common thread of communication uh, of things that we run into. Yes, ma'am. You can just ask him, let me see if I understand you. That's you good. Go. That's good. That's good. That's good. I like that. I like then you get the whole thing over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. It might not be very polite, but I got a daughter that can talk 90 miles an hour, and she's got H H A D or whatever that is, and she can change subjects as she goes and not miss a beat. And finally, one day, my husband says. Shut up! <laughs> I got her attention. <laughs> that's gonna lead us into a, that's gonna lead us into our next uh, our next discussion. <laughs> but here's the golden rule: Matthew seven twelve. We we um, we paraphrase this text a lot, and it's simply paraphrasing it, the text says, "Do unto others as what." You would have to do to if you. you want someone to listen to you while you're speaking, then pay them the courtesy of listening to them when they're speaking. Simple rules, but, it's, but they're not always easy to follow, are they? It's, it's easier said, said than done. Now, we're going to do an exercise utilizing this speaker-listener technique, okay? And it goes like this. In our, in our relationship with each other, especially in the family setting, we will say things that are either caustic or aggravating. We'll use words or phrases or gestures that are aggravating or caustic to a family member. Now, one of the things that we have to always remember while we're communicating with each other is that we have to be honest. Since we don't know what a person is thinking, if someone says something, uses a word constantly or does a, <clears throat> use a phrase or just a constantly, <clears throat> and you never tell them that that's aggravating or caustic to them, they will never know. They will never know. Give me an example. When something doesn't make sense to me, and it's completely off, off, off the block, I'll just say, I'll use the word dumb. That just, to me, is just dumb. Yeah. Now, I used that for years. One time, and Carmen and I were talking, and, and um, she said something, and I chuckled a little bit. I said, that's really dumb. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and remember what, what I, I mentioned last night, that we are emotional creatures, and we are not made to suppress feelings. If you suppress feelings, at some point, those feelings are going to become volcanic, and they're going to blow up, and it's usually going to be at an inconvenient time and an inconvenient place, OK? Well, she had taken this and heard this for years. And when she said it, this was her volcanic moment. <laughs> this little Puerto Rican blew up. <laughs> and blew up. She started, she got up and she started walking around me. She said, I am not dumb. She said, I have a bachelor's degree. I've got two masters. I've got an honorary doctorate. And I said, where'd the resume come from? I didn't answer for the resume, you know. And she said, but I'm not dumb. And I said, I didn't say you were dumb. I said, what you said was dumb, you know. <laughs> but, but here's what happens. You call, you say something about a person and use a derogatory word like that, and they attach it to themselves. So by me saying that what she said was dumb, she felt like I was calling her what? Dumb. Yeah. yeah. So we had to make a pact. That word can't be used in our household anymore. So when I feel the D word building up in my chest, I got to come up with a substitute. And I didn't do so good at first. When I, I, I felt the D word building, and I said, well, that's not very intelligent. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bad, wasn't it, huh? <laughs> yeah, 
And so when I can't come up with a word, I'll just say, you know, <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. There's another one. <clears throat> so we don't use that in our household. We have to say this because that's aggravating to her. And once you find out that there's something aggravating or displeasurable to a family member, then you have to be intentional about keeping happiness in your home and you must vow to say, we're not going to use that anymore. Now the other expression that, that, um, that we don't use in our home, we don't even let our kids or grandkids use this. And that's the, that's the phrase, shut up. When you say shut up to someone, you don't usually say, oh, shut up. <laughs> when you want them to be quiet, you got the intonation, you got the facial expression, you got to do something. Shut up. <laughs> huh? Nobody, young or old, likes to be told to shut up. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't even let, we don't even let our, our grandkids uh, or our children use that. One time all four of them were over at the house when they were much, uh, a little younger. And um, we heard them arguing or something, or doing something upstairs, and we heard one of them say, oh, you shut up. And we said, when we yelled up there, how could you have said that differently? They paused. Would you please be quiet? That's a lot softer, isn't it? Now, here's the exercise that we're going to do. If you were a family member, <clears throat> we want you to get together with them, and we want you to identify words that you use in your house, in your home, that are aggravating or caustic. And then, after you've identified the word, then we want you to come up with a substitute. If you're not with a family member, then get with a group. Because what we discovered is that there are certain words that we all use that can be aggravating and caustic, and simply because society has its pull on us and the words that we use, and then we bring that into our, into our homes and we use that with each other, and we cause all kinds of aggravation within the home, on words and expressions that we, that, we, that we use, okay? We're going to give you a few minutes to do that, and then we're going to come back together as a group, and then we're going to share that, because this is where we can help each other in identifying some, some words and expressions that are caustic or aggravating and can be potential problem makers within your, within your home setting, okay? Okay, folks, let's come together. Let's come together. How'd you do? Was that interesting? Did you discover some stuff? Huh? Yeah, I discovered that women can talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're young. Okay, I'm going to start back with that table back there and uh, share with us what, give me, first of all, I want you to give us a caustic word that you identified and then the substitute that you, that you used. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Where am I headed? Now, this is where well, we help each other because if you got stuck trying to come up with a good substitute, then, you know, and if they, they say a word, um, I'm going to ask you what's wrong with that. And, you know, I want you to talk about it because this is where we help each other um, in, our, in our conversation with each other. Okay, go ahead. Well, my daughter came in right about the time we, we started this, and I asked her, I said, is there anything that I do or say to you that you just really don't like? And she said, well, Daddy, I don't like it when you say quit talking. Because she'll just be sitting there just going on and on about whatever, and I don't even know what she's talking about. I'm like, Kylie, quit talking. <laughs> and she said, well, a good alternative would be to say, Kylie, I love you, but please quit talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what what substitute did you find? Did that, did you find back there? What substitute? Yeah. Rather than, than saying I love you, but but still quit talking. Stop it. <laughs> oh well, that's she said just to say that to her, Kylie. I love you, but please quit talking. Oh, she wants to be said. Yeah. Okay. Is that acceptable? Yeah. Come here, come here, Okay. Okay. You softened your tone. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Anything that was soft in the tomb, okay, okay. What else? What else back in that table? Because there was some of you all back there. What, my what husband, else did you come up with? My husband's been dead for 10 years, but my son lives with me, and 
He goes on and on and on. I say, oh, shut up, and we both laugh. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Once again, what's the substitute? What can you say differently? I guess. How can you say it differently? Stuff it. Oh, Lord, now this is great. This is great. Because nobody's absolute. Hmm? Okay. Now let me pose a question to the group based on that. You're in a, in a family setting, but you never, you have rarely seen. <laughs> <laughs> See how quick it comes out? Yeah. <laughs> but you've rarely seen you've rarely seen a difference in that in that in that behavior in your experience with that person, is it, is it ever appropriate to use the word never or always? No. Okay, tell me why. There's always exception. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, Irving. <laughs> So nothing, nothing's, uh, no, nothing's ab uh, ab uh, absolute, okay? So what would you, what would you, how would you say it differently? Uh, I gave you one example. You seldom. You seldom. You seldom. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because nobody likes to say, nobody likes to hear you say you never do that because you categorize them and you said that their behavior never changes with that. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Let me go to this table. I saw a lot of exchange going on on this table. Let's move to this table. Give me, a, give me a, some caustic words and also uh, what substitutes you came up with. Well, ours is a little different. Junior doesn't really say many words when I'm talking to him. He'll say, <gasps> he'll do that. And I'm like, oh, don't say that. Don't do that again. I do this. I get like this. I'm like, oh, Junior, don't do that again. He's like, oh. So how do you do it? How do you do it? So Erica, 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 when you hear it, when, when Junior says that, or, or does that, well, he'll go, and he'll go, he says that, he does that. that. How do you interpret it? What does that, what, how do you He's interpret it? He's not that? listening to me. I'm like, you're not listening to what I'm telling you. You're acting like it's a joke, and it's not. I'm being serious. This is something that concerns me. Or this is something that bothers me, and I'm telling you, and you're not listening. You're acting like it doesn't matter to you. And he'll go, do it. Do it. <laughs> do it 50 times a day. You already did exposed. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> well, she did, hey, she did a good no, job. I, I think she did a good job. She did a <laughs> wonderful job. <laughs> she probably heard it enough, so yeah. she got good yeah. at it. Okay, so what would you like to see different? What, would, what response would be a substitute for that? I would rather him either just be quiet and continue to listen, look like he's listening, or say, Okay, well, you know, I don't really see it that way. Instead of making noises like, you know, the noises that you know he doesn't really care, like it's a joke. I want him to know it's serious. If I'm joking, it's one thing, but if I'm serious, it's Okay, you know, I'm okay. Serious. I'm going to come back to the, to the silence part, because we got, we got something else on that. We're going to come back to that. Okay, give me another caustic word that came from that table. <laughs> huh? You're lying. What about You're lying. lying. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Calling someone a liar. That's, that's our dad. <laughs> 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 no. Growing up, we, we dealt with that. You, not even in a joking way, you couldn't say to our mom, like, 
Oh, you're lying. He's like, you don't ever call somebody a liar, ever. Because you really don't know if they're lying or not. How do you know? And if they are lying, then... So what would be a substitute? What would you want to hear are, differently? Are you kidding? Huh? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Yeah. Okay. You gotta accuse them. Okay. Asking me okay. Anybody else want to chime in on this one? Hmm? A substitute for that, rather than calling somebody a liar. You can say you're not acquainted with the facts. Huh? Are you acquainted with the facts? Okay. Stop lying. <laughs> Get out of here. But that, but, but, <laughs> but, no, but that's good. I like that. I like that. Because you're multiplying words with that. You're multiplying words. Okay? All right. Let's go back in the back. Anna, what did you all come up with? In that... Yeah, <clears throat> name calling is a no-no in any respect. Because remember what we talked about last time? We talked about this safe environment. Everybody say safe. Safe. Because I want you to get this. A safe environment in your home is a place where you can be free to be who you are as an individual without fear of criticism, put downs, name calling. So name, so name calling is, is never appropriate. Okay? So... What would be an obvious, uh, uh, a good substitute? Rather than call them stupid. Not very intelligent. <laughs> The scriptures say that we are to build each other up and not tear each other, tear each other down. Okay. So, yes. Huh? How bizarre? What is a little like abstract or whatever? You know. No. So, we we'll come up with something else. Yes, sir, Miss Miss Lynn. Maybe unique. I like that better than bizarre. You like that better than bizarre? Oh yeah, a little bit. Okay. Making it feel special. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. Did, Erwin, Erwin, did you all come up with something? Let me bring this back. Let me bring, excuse me, excuse me. Let me bring this back here. Oh, well, you get the microphone. She can get the microphone since you came up with it right there. Okay, I'm... I guess I'm really bad with the kids because I lose my temper after a while. <clears throat> and I often ask my youngest, what is wrong with you? Especially after she's just been punished for something and does it again. What is wrong with you? Yes, I just lose it. <laughs> tell me how you say it. Very meanly. <laughs> as exasperated as a mother of three can get. Okay. Now, having thought about that, how can we help her out? What substitute did you come up with, first of all? Okay, so you say, be quiet. Okay, okay. What other suggestions from the group can we could, can you offer that? Okay, rather than what's wrong with you? What's your problem? Help me understand. <laughs> <laughs> she said she said, her substitute was what is your problem? <laughs> come on, come on, come on! Give me, give me, give me some help! Give me some help with this. Are you not thinking? Are you not? <laughs> She knew, she knew that was bad when she said it. She knew it. Yeah. Yes, she did. Yes, ma'am. Are you not thinking? Is there going to be a word or a phrase that you're coming No, 
it doesn't. It doesn't have to. She's asking, does it always have to be a word or a phrase? No, it doesn't. Okay, like in the case where the child is, con is continuing to repeat, you might have to come to a point where you've got to pray, get past your frustration, maybe take them and embrace them, and take a minute, and then try to discuss with them. Oh, that, that can't, that, that cannot be argued against. Come on, give her a hand. Come on, that, 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 that cannot be argued against because she, she just gave us the ultimate answer to that, you know, to take them in hand. That would be, that's the most affirming thing that, that, that could happen. Thank you for that. I have to say that um, I was not always very well in that. <laughs> I like your honesty. I love your honesty. I love your honesty. You know, okay. And, and I can understand what she's saying because my kids learned with my body language to go away and come back another day. <laughs> because if they would do something and did it again, I would just go. <laughs> <laughs> and my son would say, I'll be right back, Mom. <laughs> She's about to have a fit, is what they knew that she had. Okay, let's go, let's go to this table here. <laughs> what did you come up with, man? Well, you came up with, I came up with an aggravating uh, thing that I do. Uh, I, I often criticize my husband's driving, and it was his button. You know, he would say things like, I, you know, I'm, I've been driving all my life. Don't tell me how to drive. And, you know, so I was telling Beverly what I learned to say was, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> it changes the whole situation. He, he wants me not to feel that way. So he'll just automatically slow down and get back from the cars, and he, he likes to take curves going really, really fast on wet roads. And I really did feel like I was going to die. So I, instead of yelling and saying, I don't, you know, slow down, are you crazy? Are you, are you insane? I would say, I feel like I'm going to die. And he would just automatically slow oh. down. It worked. I love it. Are you getting, are you getting this? this is, there, there are different ways of, of communicating, and you can do it in a way that makes a person come into you, and you can say it softly and gently and lovingly. You know, you appeal to his soft side because all that other stuff was just banging. You know, you call him, you call him stupid while he's driving or like, you crazy and that kind of stuff. But you say, you said to him, you said, I feel like I'm going to die. Well, he wants to take care of the one that he loves. No, that, is that okay? That's okay. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know, yeah. you know, I can relate to something yeah. like that because when we first got married, I wasn't a talker. I know he wishes it down yeah, yeah, that I wasn't that a went talk. by a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember yeah. being in the car, and it was so cold, and he wasn't getting the message about getting get a little heat in there. So I kind of turned over, looked at the window, and said, I'll just die in this blizzard. <laughs> and he turned on the heat. <laughs> That was good, man. Thank you for that. What did you come up with, uh, Adams? Did you come up with something? Well, we're four and a half years newlyweds, so all of our words are good. We're Mr. and Mrs. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. Okay, you've been very intentional. Okay, okay. I'll ask you in another four years. Four weeks, she said four weeks. Uh, uh, Elaine, what did you come up with? With her. Okay. And she took the notes. So. Okay. What you got? Well, one of them is you're losing it. <laughs> you're losing it. You're losing it. Like you're telling the person that no. they're losing. They're telling I'm her. being told you're losing it. <laughs> okay, and I need some help with this one. Come on, give me some help. <clears throat> bad or good, first of all? Bad. 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 Okay. What's it bad? Why is it bad? To me, it sounds like. Okay, That's like name like calling. Like yeah, like, like they're saying you're crazy. Okay, okay, okay. So what's a sub? What's a substitute? Because evidently, what what the, the circumstances may you, you're not making sense to him or or something. Losing your temper. Okay. 
It used to be you've got a hole in your sock. Means I'm losing it, but now he just comes out and says, <laughs> you got a hole you're in losing it. I hadn't heard that one before. You got a hole in your sock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Anybody, let's get some help. We need some help with this one. Yes, sir, Pastor. Maybe it's, uh, can you explain it again or something like that? Just something like that. Oh, okay. I like that. I like that. He's saying, can you explain that again? Okay. Or can you explain it better? That, that's good. Okay. Or I'm okay. not following you. I don't understand. Yeah. I'm not following you. Yeah. yeah I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. I just say I disagree. Uh, I mean, yeah. he obviously disagrees with her. So you can just say, well, I disagree. Ah, okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. But you know, that's interesting. <laughs> that's always a good that's always a good response she yeah she said she said that's very interesting that's interesting your opinion i don't agree but it's interesting you yeah that's interesting yeah. Stuff in your mind. that's a different perspective yeah okay what else did you have what else did i come up with well one of them we've already touched on what's wrong with you and the other one is you ought to do it this way okay okay tell me what's wrong with that that's especially, much, much now that's especially bad to a kid. Yeah. Because if you tell a kid you ought to do it this way, then for him or for her, like, you know, like, well, why did I, you know, how come I can't do it this way? But I, I think that if you say to a child, you know, it's interesting the way you did that, but hey, let's try it this way, yeah. you know, so you're not putting him or her down. Or you could say, have you ever thought about doing it this way? Yeah, yeah, a little better in it. Um, because, because to a parent to a child, when you're communicating parent to child, we have to be very careful because to the child, they almost seems like they're, like you're always being instructive. You know, giving them instructions for that. And, and deep down, kids don't like to be instructed all the time. They like to be affirmed. And, right. Uh, uh, in, in different ways, okay? Now, from this exercise, and you did great, you did great. I always like this, I always like this, and especially we find out, never, we never know what's coming. <laughs> now, before I move on, um, um, Gene. Gene said that the one thing that we missed was, in terms of the listening, she said that sometimes men have uh, in, in selective Selective hearing. <laughs> I see women shaking their head saying yes. So, so, so explain what you meant by that, Jean. Well, the example I gave him was I can be talking to my husband, think he's listening, and later on I say something. He says, you didn't tell me that. But I can get on the phone and talk to a friend, and he can repeat word for word what I said on my end of the conversation. Selective. Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> He's good at that? Okay. <laughs> now, from this exercise, what did you pull from this? Give me some things that you pulled from this in my terms wife, of the way we communicate with each other. My wife and daughters aren't very smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have an escort party going with him because he's going to have trouble going home today. But <laughs> well, I just have trouble getting something to eat. <laughs> But what are some of the other things you pull from this? Put your mind and communicating as we communicate with each other. Better ways to talk to others. Okay. Okay. Well, just because I say something, I'll just say you can't change um, what the other person says necessarily, but you can change what you say. Okay. Okay. You can change your response. Right. And okay. And also sometimes because that person may never change. Okay. But you can always say, when you say that to me, I feel like. Good. Oh, However, that's good. Now you put a, you hit on something, Ms. Adams, because when you when you when the moment your family member says what you said made me feel, you can't argue against that because you can't argue against uh, about somebody what they feel. It doesn't matter if you agree with that or not. If they made them feel that way, then you got to be you got to change that. Okay, very good. What else? What else you pull from this? Well, if you want someone to listen to you, you can't insult them first. 
Okay. That's good. Whether it's your child or your husband or your wife or whatever. Okay. Okay. So she's saying, she said that when you want somebody to listen to you, you can't insult them. You can't insult them first. Okay. Because then they're going to cut, they're going to shut down and not going to listen to you at all. Okay. What else? What did she pull from this? Yeah. Right. And this is where that speaker listener technique comes in. You know, you want to be on the same page of understanding. Doesn't mean that you agree with what they're saying, but you want to be able to understand where they are coming from with that. And it's the same courtesy that you would want someone to, to give to you. <clears throat> it also uh, tells us, beloved, that that when we talk to each other, we've got to stop and think before we speak and be intentional about what we, what we say because the greatest hurt, that uh, harm that can come to another person come, can come from the mouth or the hand of the person that you are closest to in your home. That's why it hurts so much. You know, by if someone says something in your home, because sometimes you can take what somebody says outside your home a lot better than you can from somebody that's inside your home because these are people that are supposed to love you. And love says, love does not deliberately hurt, okay? Now we know we say some things to each other that, that we mean for it to hurt. We want you to feel that, and then you feel bad after you've done that. You feel bad after you're doing that, so be more intentional with it. And then, <clears throat> give me a name again. Beverly, what she said, <clears throat> especially if you're dealing with a child, and even if we're dealing with each other as, as adults, you know, to pray, and then can, uh, affirm that individual. They're going to be more in a listening mode than ever before. It's one of the things that we, that we won't do. <clears throat> we won't pray a lot. When we're trying to resolve conflict, um, a disagreement comes between you and a family, and your family member <clears throat> stays between you and your spouse. We have to employ this speaker-listener technique so that you know where each person is coming from. What is it that we're actually disagreeing about? <clears throat> and then after you understand each other's perspective, the next step to that is to pray. But we very seldom do that. See, I was saying this morning that we either believe Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, or we don't. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, in all thy ways. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In how many ways? All thy ways. That means every aspect of your living. God wants to get us in the, in the position where everything that we do, we have invited his presence into that. If we do that, then we are going to say something that is going to be uplifting and not degrading to one another. So it means that we've got to be intentional and we've got to think before we, before we, before we speak uh, <clears throat> to be able to show that kind, that kind of love. This has been good. Has it been helpful? Has it been helpful? <laughs> Good. Okay? Yeah. We're almost finished, but look at this. A survey of, um, of a thousand college students was taken. Actually, it was a combination of college and, and people on the street. And they asked, how many hugs do you need a day? <clears throat> and some people are not touchy-feely. Others are. <clears throat> and they need that kind of affirmation. How many would you say hugs that you would need? I don't think they made enough. <clears throat> That's good. That made enough. Jean, how many do you need? I'm not a huggy feeling person, so. <laughs> one a do for you? One a month, one a week? <laughs> how about you, Elaine? Oh, ten. How many you can get? How about you? So that lots, 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 lots of hugs. Lots of hugs. <laughs> how about you, Ed? You like, like, Irvin, need any hugs? No. <laughs> he said, yeah, I like the hug. I mean, I mean, how many is sufficient? How many is sufficient? A day? Yeah. Just want to hug a day, we are. Okay. 
one, one good hefty one. Okay. They took this survey and they discovered that the average amount of hugs that a person felt like they needed was four. Four hugs a day. You know, four hugs a day. You know, and, re and basically what it is is that getting into the habit, and even if you're not touchy feely, but getting into the habit of, a, of just affirming one another, okay? You know, complimenting each other. In the family circle, I'm talking about. Because usually we talk about complimenting our husbands, our wives, but compliment your children. You know, we always point out what's bad things they do rather than pointing out the good things that we do. Now, let me ask you this question. When you pay a compliment to a person, what message are you sending to that person? You value them, okay? What else? Happiness. Happiness, good, good. What else? Affirming. Affirming, okay, what else? You admire them? Okay, what else? Is that edifying? Hmm? Is it edifying like the Bible? Yeah, it's edifying. Yes, it yeah, is. it's edifying. What else? Because all these are good. Because these are all the messages that are sent when you compliment. Is what it does. What's that, hon? Exactly. It builds their self-esteem. Yes. It does, and it makes them glow a little bit more. It makes them feel proud of who they are. That's great. That's great. Building up their self-worth and their self-esteem. You know, building up rather than tearing, tearing down. And we get to get in the habit of being able to pay those compliments to each other daily. I tell, we tell husbands and wives, compliment your spouse every day. But don't use the same one every day. <laughs> shows love, too. Yeah, it shows love. And then when you pay a compliment, be honest with it. You know, especially if you're married, don't say to her, gentlemen, that, you know, you still look the same as we did when we first married, because she know you lying and you know you lying. But but uh, but, uh, but if you say but if you say I you still have that glow in your eye that I remember. Now you're being honest with that, but affirming each other with that. Now let me say that let us say this one thing too before we move on. We will come come back to Erica. You said something about sometimes to be silent. Okay. You're talking to one another in the family circle. And all of a sudden, one or the other just goes silent. What message is your silence sending to the person that you were communicating with? That you don't care to discuss it anymore. Huh? You're not communicating anymore. What did you say, Jean? I said I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. What else? You hurt me so bad, I'm not going to respond anymore. Okay, that's a message that you're sending. Okay, what else? Okay. Okay, you're sending these messages. These are all messages. Now, who's the only one that knows that? Me. That's exactly right. The person you're communicating doesn't. Let me know now. <laughs> 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 but what you're doing is you, you put in your family member and place them into a guessing game. And that is unfair to them. Because even in silence, if you decide to go silent, you still have to communicate. You still have to indicate to that individual that you can't talk, either you're angry or, or whatever, but they don't know, only you know. So you have to communicate that to them. Now there are rules even to the silence. There are rules to communication. Whoever cuts off the conversation by going silent, regardless of if you have to calm down, cool down, or gather your thoughts, whatever, has to be the individual who has to reinitiate the conversation within a reasonable time. Or else, you have an unresolved issue going that could be like a slow-growing <coughs> cancer in your relationship. And you don't want any of that okay, uh, to, to go on. And especially if you're having a disagreement and the person that you're talking to just turns and walks away. Now, if the person says to you, listen, I can't talk about this right now. You've got to let them go. You can't say, oh no, we're going to talk about this now. You can't, you can't follow them out the room because now you're going to start an argument. And what's the, what's the goal of an argument? Come on, talk get to me. Your, get your way. Get your way? But what's the ultimate goal? Win or lose? Win. To win. So that if I'm having an argument with Carmen and I win, 
What's that make her? And that can never happen in a relationship. Husband, wife, parent with child. That can never happen. That's dangerous and injurious. We always want to come away from even a disagreement in a win-win situation. Because in order for me to win, that means I'm going to have to say or do something to destroy or lower her self-esteem or her self-worth. And though I may have won, I've really lost. And so I want to, we want to be in a, in a mode where we build each other up and not tear each other down. And what do you say? Even if the situation is not a good one uh, with your children. For example, I had a, a student who uh, came to me and told me he didn't have his homework. And I said, Jerry? He said, Miss, Miss G, I had my homework in my book bag, and the wind took it out of my book bag, and it got stuck to the bus wheel. And I was going to grab it, but the bus started to go, and that homework kept going and going. I, I, I just didn't get it in here. <laughs> it was so good. You know what I said? Jim, that is the best made-up story I've heard <laughs> in all my teaching career. You go, boy. That is really good. I said, but... I gotta give you an F. <laughs> so, but because that story was so good, you bring it to me tomorrow and I'll only take off 10 points. And then I walked away and I said, man, that is the best story. <laughs> <laughs> but even with that, he brought it in the next day. But I could have said, you know, I know you're lying. You know, I'm, you know I know you're lying. I could have done that. And what would have done to him? It would have, <laughs> cut his self-esteem really in half. So we even have to do that with our own children. That <clears throat> when they come up with the stuff, and they're going to come up with some stuff, you know, you kind of first say, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> but, you know, make sure you, you discipline. But you got to discipline with a little love and some, you know, wit that God does give you. Uh, even in stuff that they bring home that's not good. That's not good. You know, I, uh, Carlos had vocabulary test, and he studied. He did. He really studied. And uh, we prayed over it, and he only got a seven. Came home and dragged in his paper. And I said, what happened? He said, I only got a 70. And I took the paper, and I looked at his face, and I said, you go, Carlos. You pass, man. You pass. Let's put that on the way. He was shocked. But why? I knew he had worked hard on it, and that's the best he could do. And you could really kill a kid by saying, yeah, see, yeah, see, I only got a 70. And we do that with our kids. But after that, he never got a 70 again because he worked hard. Am I, am I on your side? We have to be gentle with one another in our homes. Our homes are so precious. That's our security. Learn how to be nice to, to be each nice. other. Just be kind. And our words can sting worse than, than a belt, uh, a child getting spanked with a belt or whatever. Our words can do a lot of damage, and they can take years to repair. Let's ask the Lord to come in, because he's the greatest communicator the world has ever known. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Come on, say amen. amen. And he says, you talk to me, sometimes you ignore me, you go silent on me, and, uh, and all of this, but I love you anyhow. And we have to demonstrate love. We can't just say it, we have to demonstrate it. And we pray that, that, that this, has been, this afternoon has been helpful. It's been fun, but at the same time, it's been, uh, hopefully it's been impactful. And we must change uh, the way that we communicate with each other, being more intentional, and we change, not later, but right now. What you have in the remaining of these, of these slides is just something. Hey, are you listening to me? And then keep on listening. Choose the right time to communicate. Remember the signs at the railroad crossing. Stop, look, and listen. The closer families come to God, the closer they come to each other. Our Heavenly Father is trying to communicate, trying to communicate with us. Freddie, last time we talked to the married couples about having a safe place where you're, you can say what you mean and know 
that it's going to be taken correctly. That's the way your home needs to be, even for your children, a safe place. One of the things that we did with our children was that we said to them, you can disagree without being disagreeable. There's a way of you disagree where you're, you're not just ugly about disagreeing. And we said, you can always say, I don't agree. And so um, we took the dining room table, because we don't sit there every day. We sit in the dinette. And we told our kids that they could call a family meeting anytime. This is the best thing we could have ever done. And so when Carlos was about eight, <coughs> Buddy was cleaning out his um, toy chest. And Carlos came, and he saw that his toy chest was being cleaned out, and he started putting stuff from the trash back into his toy chest. And Buddy said, no, that stuff is junk. That stuff is junk. Leave it alone. And so a couple of days later, he called a family meeting. <laughs> we didn't know. I mean, you know, the junk thing had expired for us. And so we called the family. We all came around. And when we say family, I mean everybody. Our, our sons and our grandkids, all of us. And we said, uh, Carlos has called the family meeting. But he had prayer. And then he said, Carlos has called the meeting, and we want him to tell us what he would like to say. So he said, he's eight. He said, I just want the family to know that my stuff is not junk. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, thank you very much, sat down. But look how he did it. He didn't go screaming, my son's not young, like some kids do. He actually called the family meeting and said what he needed to say in a very nice way. And so Buddy said, thank you for that. We'll remember that and not call your stuff junk ever again. And we were very careful not to do But that. if you create an environment where, where kids can have input, it means a lot. So yeah. that means that they have a buy-in to the family, which they do. They're a very important part. And God doesn't want us to minimize uh, the contribution and input of anybody that's a member of that family, whether they're young or old. And if we learn how to value each other like that, our homes are going to be much uh, uh, safer. They're going to be more happier. And, and when people look at your family, and the way that you operate with each other in your home, it is a tremendous witness of the power of God in your lives. Come on, say amen. 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 And so we leave you with that. Yes, sir. yes, Brother Adam. What happened to the junk that you threw out? It was gone. Yeah. It was gone. Right? It was yeah. already gone. Yeah. That's why yeah. we were surprised when he called the meeting. Alone. For us, the junk stuff had already gone. But he, in the future, you know, he wanted to know, he wanted to protect his stuff for the future. Yeah, because we explained to him, you know, there's some things that you don't, you, you don't play with anymore. You know, you played with them when you were two, but you're not going to play with them at, at eight, and you're definitely not going to play with them when you're 16. You say, so, so uh, it's okay to give them explanation, and they deserve explanation before you, before you do anything with that. The main thing of it is, is keeping the, the, the lines of communication open between you and your, and your family members, and especially your children, because... Then when, when uh, life, when they, when they begin to have this transition in life, they will know that it's always safe. I can go to my dad, I can go to my mom, and I can talk to my parents, and they will listen to me. Because the complaint we get a lot from teenage kids is that they'll, they'll come to us, and the and first question I'll ask them, have you talked this over with your parents? I said, I can't talk to my parents. My parents don't listen to me. And that's a bad commentary for parenting, isn't it? Yeah, that, that you don't, that you, that your children, that your parents don't listen to their, to their children. So we have, we can improve on that. Now one last thing, buddy, because I, I'm a proponent of children. I love children, and I'm always thinking of ways to make them lift it, to lift them. And one of the things that I did with my Carlos, and he's already a junior in high school when I started doing this, and so I would put a little dope in his lunch that would say. I'm proud of you, I know you can do it. Or I would say, Mom loves you. Now, now Carlos is my grandson, but we raised him. So we treat him like our own son. And I said, Mom loves you, and I know praying for you in your test today, or that kind of thing. And he would open up his lunch, and there's that little note from me. And he would go, oh, I must put another note in my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but he realized how much 
it meant to the other guys that were with him. Because Kyle, when they oh, said... That's his best friend. Is that, your, is that a note from your, from your mom? He said, yeah, another note. And Kyle said, have her put one in there for me next time. <laughs> <laughs> it really meant a lot to him. So even, you know, even that, and be, after that, um, I would send him things. Like this morning, I sent him a little video of a cat singing, I love you. God bless you. And he said Andrew, so I know what he's going to think. When he, finally, <laughs> when he finally gets it today, he's going to die. <laughs> but another thing that, that you can do to, to increase your family is, is that write each other letters. We believe in letter writing and write the, each other a letter. And what we've done with our, with our children is we'll write them a letter and mail it and let it come to them. And they open it up and it's a, it's a, it's a letter from their, from, from, from their parents affirming them of what they're saying. Because we always tell each other the bad things we do, but we very seldom take the time to affirm and tell them the good things we do. You know, the fact that they said, I'm proud of you. You know, well, I didn't do anything. Yeah, I'm proud of you just because you're my child. You know, I'm proud of you just because you're my husband. I'm proud of you just because you're my, my wife. Means a lot. Affirmation goes a long way. Folk, you have been an excellent audience, and we can't tell you how much we have enjoyed um, our session together, and we look forward to, to doing this again in the future if, if that's possible, okay? All right. God bless you. Let's stand together and let's have a word of prayer um, as we end today. It's been a great Sabbath, and um, thank you so much for the warmth. that we can kind of just kind of link up together and hold hands. Great. And thank you so much for your for your participation because that's what made it meaningful uh, this after this afternoon. Your participation has been so good. All right. Yes, sir. Um, we're very grateful that y'all were able to come out. Thank you, man. Uh, just uh, we're it's very a blessed. And uh, I just wanted to give you all something to show our appreciation. Oh, thank, thank you all so man. much, and you guys are welcome to come. And visit us anytime. Thank you so much, Thank Pastor. You How many of you all appreciate it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lord, we are thankful to you for putting us in your family. That's the greatest joy that we have. We thank you, Lord, for putting us in earthly families. We're in, the earth, in our families here on this earth. We're learning the, the lesson, Lord, of selflessness putting others before ourselves. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the capacity to be able to communicate. We want to be able to do it better in our homes. We want to be affirming at every, at every turn. We want, to, we want you to be pleased with the way that we relate to each other here. And that can only be made possible through the power of your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we pray that you would take charge of our lives so that the words, that, the thoughts that we think and the words that we speak, the things that we do in our home circle will always be pleasing to you. Thank you for this time together today and uh, throughout this entire Sabbath day. And we pray now that as we are dismissed from this place, but never from your presence, bless us and keep us. We pray in Jesus' name and save us in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.